and welcome to another episode of Other Side Replay. Today we want to talk about what we've been playing lately. So, Will, what's been taking up most of your free time? Autobots transform and roll out the Transformers video game. I waited a long time to play this bad boy, waited for it to kind of go down in price, you know, being cheapskate. Actually, I was stuck playing Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, you were on a Battlefront, and, yeah. you were on a Fallout, you were still, on a Far Cry still, yeah. kick for quite a while there. I've been building, building, but anyway, so we took a time out, played some Transformers, and this freaking, okay, you know by now I'm an 80s baby, all right, so... The, the 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 animation of this game looks exactly like the cartoons. We've said it before, I've been waiting to play this game. You know, I didn't hear, like, spectacular reviews about the game. Nobody was really bashing it, but, I mean, good God, this game... It wasn't talked about as much as War for Cybertron or Fall yeah, for Cybertron. Yeah, I thought it was spectacular. And I'm just, I mean, like, even trying to fight, like, Soundwave, you know, he's a Decepticon, he turns into a cassette tape, or, a, sorry, a cassette player, and he would eject these tapes, you know, in the cartoons. Man, you're fighting him, he's ejecting the, you know, the, the little robot or the, 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 the dog, the bird, you know, and you're fighting all these things. It was so... Freaking fun. So much fun. Uh, you get to be Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Wheeljack, Sideswipe, and Grimlock. Um, and then the Decept you're only the Autobots in this game. Uh, you don't get to bounce back and forth like you did in the two prior games. But the Decepticons, they give you, you know, Starscream and his jets. The Insecticons are in it. The Constructicons. Um, so there's just one scene when you're on Cybertron. And I, and I was playing as Optimus Prime, which was really cool. You go rolling into this, like major like throne room type thing and and there's devastator you know the constructicons you know they all form up the really cool looking devastator not that piece of crap from the michael bay film and then the stunticons show up they're like the cars and the semi truck that resembled optimus prime and they form into the giant robots so you're optimus you're fighting these two big guys and grimlock and they're all fighting with you it was just so epic it was so much fun um if you play it on an easier level which i had to because i was getting my ass kicked by megatron too much so i had to restart actually um, but you can get through the game in probably two days easy. Yeah. It's and, not and a very long game. I would say game. graphically, it's a you know it's a it's a better homage to the '80s cartoon, whereas the previous Transformers games kind of went more of a grittier. Right. They had know, kind of a look. To yeah, it. they had kind of a newer take on them. Where yeah, this exactly. Is straight out of the freaking cartoon, and the transformation is so fun, and the combos that you can do. You know, if you're like punching someone, you hit a button, and your car transforms and now, smacks into them. Now, it was and, pretty short. Yeah. And it's an action game. Yeah. But story-wise, would you say this is better than the last Michael Bay Transformers movie? Oh, by far. Michael Bay's not made anything yeah. that's as good as this. You know, it's pretty simple. You know, Megatron's trying to turn Earth into Cybertron. Oh, so okay. he's got all this machinery and stuff, and then they end up having to go back to Cybertron because he's getting his ass kicked here on, on Earth by, you know, Optimus Prime. And, you know, you can upgrade your guys, too. And that, that was one thing. I was like, man, you could play this game a lot, actually, because you can use the experiment. If you use your experience points to build up, like, Optimus Prime, his guns, you can build up. You can change the swords he uses, you, can, you know, because you can use your laser guns, and you can use, like, whatever swords or hammer or whatever. But anyways, you upgrade each person. So you can play this game several times. And I think the more you're playing it, the stronger you get your guy, then when you're playing it on the harder levels, it's easier. So, yeah. And I didn't discover everything. I just went, I was just so into the damn story. It's like, yeah, let's yeah. get it. It was great. It was fun. I loved it. Excellent. I want more. Thundercats game. Something cool like that next. That would, that would be very that would be very cool. Recapturing my childhood. <laughs> Excellent. So well, Transformers, two thumbs up. Heavy replay. Yes. Definitely playing again. Well, that's now good. Now you... That's good. Now, or lately, said about. yeah, lately I have been playing Project Spark, and if you will, a moment of silence for Project Spark. Hmm. August 12th, the servers for Project Spark go offline. Wow, that's um, soon. Yes, yes. What that means is you won't be able to play other people's games online, you won't be able to upload your own games. Um, online now if you don't know what project spark is I won't hold it against you because it wasn't pushed very hard project spark was a game released by Microsoft on both Windows and the Xbox one where you could basically create your own games um, you had everything from placing the characters to building the terrain to building their props to inputting coding into the brains of everything just to make anything happen you have to do coding now granted the interface Probably could have been friendlier, but with the amount of stuff that you can pull off in this game, it was very impressive it's able to exist at all. And someone like me, who isn't very computer savvy, could figure out 
how to program different things, and that there was a real um, there was a real thriving community for it where you could learn from other people's creations. You know, you could edit their creations. You could go into the brains of one of their characters and see how they programmed something. Um, I thought it was a really great entry level game programming kit. I know there are other uh, game programming kits out there that you can get it uh, that you can get, and that um, you spend some time with them. You can get them now. You're not, but you're not going to start with the amount of materials that Project Spark gave you, and I don't think it's as easy to learn. Now it's more complicated, so you can produce stuff that looks way better than anything you'd ever get on Project Spark. But I think it was a great entry level if you have young kids, you know, uh, teenagers, whatnot, that want to get into programming games. This was a perfect platform for them to really see what that's like, learn how to do it. It was a great jumping off point. And then the fact that you could get feedback from other creators. You could upload, you know, people could comment on what you've done, you know, and they can re-edit something you've done. And, you know, maybe they do it better and you learn from that. I, I really enjoyed the sharing of it. Um, you, now, people who paid for it, you will still get, um, you'll get a refund if you downloaded it. Um, you get it in credit. Right. on Microsoft account, and if you purchased it. Um, yes, because without the online feature, you can still play the game, I imagine. You can play stuff you created. I imagine you can still create. Mm -hmm. I mean, they haven't been That's too, what I was wondering. They haven't talked too much about that, but without the online feature, you're creating these games for yourself. Right. Um, so you can still use it for that, I would imagine, but it's basically worthless once you take away the online feature. You know, so yeah, refunds were given. So, why did, uh, so that was good. What was the, the reason? It's been um, going cut, for cut two years. Cutbacks. Uh, Microsoft said they haven't had any layoffs, but cost wise, it wasn't cost effective to have people working on this game any longer to debug it, uh, provide support, things like that. And that people that were working on it have moved on to other projects and whatnot. Um, I just think it's sad that something as revolutionary. At least for me. I mean, I played other, you know, the RPG builder and different little things where you can design your own thing. Doom has Snap Map where you can, you know, design your own maps. But I'd never seen anything on consoles that was as detailed and as good as this. I mean, there are some amazing stuff. Uh, I, I've got a Godzilla game that was made on there. I'm currently working <laughs> on a Batman game. I've created a Star Wars game. You created a another Space side Marine game. game. The other side... Um, another Dragon Warrior, which complete ripoff of the title, but I'm not mm -hmm. getting paid for it, so who cares? So what's um, the difference, though, between why is this keeping this running different than keeping, like, Grand Theft Auto V, which I ain't paid shit for in a long time, and it's still running. I don't know. Time. I honestly think Microsoft shot themselves in the foot with this game. Um, I got this game as a free download, the base game. Right. Now, you had to pay for, <laughs> um, like extra set pieces and, you know, extra mm -hmm. packs that they right. released, but they didn't cost very much. Now, yeah, you could buy the game retail, but really, if you bought it retail, it just came with a lot of stuff that us that got the free version paid for. Right. You know, so I honestly think if they had charged uh, just a normal price for this out of the gate, then maybe they would have gotten the money they thought, because you can't say they weren't getting any money from it, because in order to play it, just like with any online game with Microsoft, right. you have to pay for your Xbox Gold membership. Right. So they were making money every year off of people who played this game, regardless, right. because you have to pay that membership so if you want to do anything with this. Is there any outcry um, yet? People... Oh, they, they're, you know, the Project Spark community is upset. There was a cute little... Uh, cute little game with a cutscene that was on there of Kylo Ren trashing the computer monitors when he heard that <laughs> Project Spark was being shut down. Oh, um, I love to use You know, that and there is, the community <laughs> is trying to put together their own wikis, you know, uh, so all the information from this can be compiled since you won't be able to share online anymore. Mm. Um, so yeah, it, it did have a strong community. It's been active, you know, recently. If you go on there, as recent as Captain America Civil War, there are games made about that on right. there. You know, Dark yeah, know Souls 3, there's a game made about that on there. But do you think this has anything to do with how the system would have, how the game would have been played on an Xbox One S? Well, perhaps. Or Project Scorpio, Well, maybe? perhaps. I mean, I would hope that when Xbox goes to the whatever the fuck and the bullshit, that your Xbox One games are still... You right, know, you'd still I mean, be able to port them over, but maybe, maybe there was a, uh, you know, 
maybe there was a conflict, but what they state was financial, and although they haven't had any layoffs, they certain projects have to get cut. They also cut Lionhead Studios. Um, you know, mm -hmm. that, that was another one that, you know, got the axe recently. Um, but the, I think this is actually, it's, it's very, in, you know, informative and interesting, a online server going down, considering at Star Wars Celebration, which we didn't cover in our last video, uh, EA discussed the Battlefront single player campaign. Oh, yes. Which is essentially just the... the Battlefront single player. Yes, which is essentially just Walker Assault and, um, you know, the... the the dog fighting one. It's basically the same stuff you do online. You can do it single player and it populates it with bots, but it gives the bots gamer tags. So it's the online experience, which is interesting that they do that because when the servers for Battlefront go down, likely when they release Battlefront Front 2, yeah. that $110 you spent for Battlefront, you might as well have thrown through a paper shredder. So they're giving you a single player campaign. Now, there, there was a bit of backlash from this. You know, people weren't very excited with what they said. You know, they said, well, you know, how about cutscenes? How about a little dialogue? How about you throw a damn story in there? Right. You know, now granted the, the single player, it's going to be a free download right. where you can do this and everything, but I think it's a lackluster Justifying effort. Justifying my $110 that much more. Yeah, I think it's a lackluster effort, and I think a lot like Project Spark, that that's all you'll be able to do on Battlefront in well, the future is play that game on your own in basically the same thing you used to do online. Hmm. Interesting. You know, but it's I'm too still bad. excited about finally I'm getting to do the Death Star battle and things like that. Yes, I know. I, I'm excited too about flying amongst the stars, finally, yeah. in a game called Star, Star Wars. Wars. But I can say the last DLC, I've not even really played it. I played it I for play, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I play a little bit of Cloud City and I couldn't find a match on Tatooine, but I guess that's what happens when you divide your audience. Yeah, that did kind of suck. That's why I was wondering if these single campaigns, if I can play them on the outer rim. I would fucking <laughs> hope so. Just throw every, yeah, just throw every, every map and every game mode, and I can pretend that you gave me, you know, the 501st, like in Battlefront 2. And I'm sorry. I just, I can't be a fan of that game. It's, it's a fun distraction every once in a while, but the well, fact that it got its ass kicked by a game that came out nine years ago yeah. is just depressing. You know? All right. So that's Transformers, Project Spark. R.I.P. August 12th. So, let us know what you think um, about Project Spark if you're outraged. And uh, go play some Transformers. And this is Other Side Replay. We'll see you next time. Later.